guys, today we are going to see about super plasticizers and its effect on concrete. The organic substances are combinations of organic and inorganic substances which allows a reduction in water content for the given workability or gives a higher workability at the same water content are termed as plasticizing admixtures. Plasticizers can help the difficult conditions for obtaining higher workability without using excess of water. Superplasticizers constitute a relatively new category and improved version of plasticizers, the use of which was developed in Japan and Germany during the 1960s and 1970s respectively. They are chemically different from the normal plasticizers. Use of superplasticizers permit the reduction of water content up to 30% without reducing the workability in contrast to the possible reduction of up to 15% in case of plasticizers. The use of superplasticizer is practiced for production of flowing, self-leveling, self-compacting, semi-concreting and for the production of high strength and high performance concrete. Superplasticizers are more powerful as dispersing agents. They are called high range water reducers in American literature. It is the use of superplasticizers which has made it possible to reduce the water cement ratio as low as 0.25 or even lower and yet to make flowing concrete to obtain the strength of 120 megapascals or more. Mechanism involves the dispersion and the retarding effect. Dispersion effect. Cement being a fine material will clump together when used in wet concrete. These flocculated particles trap certain amount of water used and hence enough water will not be available to fluidify the mix. When plasticizers or superplasticizers are used, they get adsorbed on the cement particles. This causes repulsion between the particles which is called zeta potential. As a result, cement particles get deflocculated and dispersed. This causes the water that is trapped inside the flocks to be released and allows the mix to flow easily. When particles are flocculated, there will be friction between them. But in dispersed condition, there is water in between the cement particles and hence interparticle friction is reduced. Retarding effect. It is mentioned earlier that plasticizer gets adsorbed on the surface of cement particles and form a thin sheet. This thin sheet inhibits the surface hydration reaction between water and cement as long as sufficient plasticizer molecules are available at the particle solution interface. The quantity of available plasticizers will progressively decrease as the polymers become entrapped in hydration products. Generation of plasticizers Lignosulfonates are the first generation plasticizers. These additives, known as mid-range water reducers, attach themselves to the surface of cement particles, which carries both positive and negative charges. Plasticizer polymers, which are negatively charged, counterbalances the positive charges on cement surface, making the entire surface negative. This triggers a physical effect that causes new negatively charged cement particles to ripple each other, creating a dispersion effect. This mix is now more workable without the need of addition of more water and allows the reduction of water content, cutting the water cement ratio to about 10%. Polysulfonates such as naphthalene and melamine are the second generation plasticizers that reduce water cement ratio to around 25%. They have a similar working mechanism to the first generation plasticizers delivering an electrical dispersion effect. The polycarboxylates or the high range water reducers that is the superplasticizers are the third generation plasticizers. These superplasticizers reduce water cement ratio to about 40%. It shows a sterical effect rather than an electrostatic repulsion. A sterical effect prevents a chemical reaction from taking place. In this case, it prevents the cement particles from flocculating. These are the classifications of superplasticizers. They are sulfonated melamine formaldehydes, sulfonated naphthalene formaldehydes, modified lignosulfates, and sulfonic acid esters. There are various factors that affect concrete due to the addition of superplasticizers. One such factor is the type of superplasticizers used. The average molecular weight of plasticizers is an essential factor for the efficiency of plasticizer. The more the molecular weight, the greater is the efficiency. The next factor is the dosage. 
Dosage of superplasticizers influences viscosity of grout and workability of concrete. The optimum dosage can be attained from the marsh cone test. Low dosage is adopted for normal concreting operations. Up to a dose of about 3% has no harmful effect on properties of hardened concrete. Higher dosage may result in shrinkage and creeps. The next factor is the mix composition. The richness of mix and use of fly ash or silica fumes influences the workability of concrete. Better the mix, better is the dispersion of particles and hence gives better workability. The next factor is the variability of cement composition. Usually a C3A content will have overriding influence on the performance of superplasticizers. The next important factor influencing concrete is the mixing procedure. Plasticizers must be properly and intimately mixed in concrete to bring about proper dispersion with the cement particles. Hence, the following procedure must be followed. Add all the calculated quantity of water into the drum. Then add all the quantity of cement and sand. Mix these ingredients very well. When they are well mixed, add the calculated quantity of superplasticizer and thoroughly mix them together. You will notice the full action of plasticizer in fluidifying the mix. Then you add the coarse aggregates and mix them for another one minute. When the mixer is not efficient as in the case of laboratory mixer, the above procedure of mixing will give good results. The length and depth of blades, the space between drum and blade and space between the blades will have a lot to do with the mixing efficiency. The mixers in the batching plant are of capacity half a cubic meter and above. They are generally of pan type. They are well designed and fabricated and as such very efficient. The mixing time is around 20 seconds. Within this short spell of 20 seconds, very intimate mixing is done. It is observed that for identical parameters, concrete mix in batching plant gives about 20 to 30 mm more slump than the trial mix carried out in the laboratory using small and inefficient mixers. There are many other problems faced at the site due to the addition of superplasticizers. When concrete pump and placer boom are used for placing concrete, the slump requirement is around 100 mm. Suppose 100 mm slump concrete is used for a roof slab casting, such a high slump which is undesirable for roof casting causes problems of segregation and bleeding. Similarly, while casting cubes using highly plasticized concrete, compaction of cubes cannot be done in the usual method of vibrating or even tamping. If the casting of cube is done blindly without understanding the behavior of such plastic concrete, segregation occurs in the cube mold. Top half of the cube mold consists of only mortar and is devoid of coarse aggregates with the result that such segregated concrete cubes show very low strength. Hence, such concretes will have to be handled with care and understanding. More recently, in Europe and Japan, new generation superplasticizers, all based on family of acrylic polymers, have been widely used. Out of these two types, namely carboxylated acrylic ester, copolymer, and multicarboxylate ether, are of particular interest. The new family of superplasticizers based on acrylic polymers shows the following characteristics Flowing concrete can be produced at lower water cement ratio. The effectiveness does not depend on the addition procedure, that is, it can be added immediately or delayed. The slump loss is much reduced than the traditional sulfonated superplasticizers. There are various advantages of adding superplasticizers. They help in reducing water content by 25-30% to 30 for given workability of water. For site conditions where water is scarcely available, they can assist in improving the workability of concrete. Use of superplasticizers helps in avoiding segregation of concrete. Superplasticized concrete can be used in concreting heavily reinforced elements. By adding superplasticizers in concrete, the speed of concreting is increased. They act as retarders in hot weather or where long placing periods are required for construction. As they make concrete more workable, less energy is needed to compact the concrete. Depending upon the requirements, self-compacting concrete can be made by using superplasticizers. Superplasticized concrete provides finishing surface of better quality. Superplasticizers also have certain limitations. They are of high cost and hence the material cost of construction increases. If superplasticizer is added in excess quantity, then bleeding of concrete may occur. Thus, 
For optimal performance, the amount or dosage of super plasticizer must be calculated carefully. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more useful information.